today, we turn our attention and minds to the 11th chapter of John, a passage that speaks of life and death, of faith and doubt, of human weakness and divine power. It is a passage that challenges us, that provokes us, that invites us to see the world and our place in it through the lens of God's eternal perspective. This is a story of a man named Lazarus, a friend of Jesus who fell gravely ill. It is a story of sisters Mary and Martha who called upon Jesus in the hour of need. But most importantly, it is a story of Jesus himself, who in his infinite wisdom and divine power chose not to heal Lazarus immediately, but to allow him to die. So that in his resurrection, God's glory might be revealed. The great theologian Charles Spurgeon once said, the sovereignty of God is the pillow upon which the child of God rests his head at night, giving perfect peace. You see, in the story of Lazarus, we see the sovereignty of God in action. We see a plan that transcends our human understanding, one designed not to bring suffering, but to bring glory to God. Why did Jesus wait? Why did he allow Lazarus to die? These are the burning questions that may have crossed your minds. But as we look closer, we begin to see the picture. We begin to see it unfolding. We begin to see a demonstration of power that goes beyond our understanding. We begin to see the manifestation of Jesus' power over death. Jesus, upon hearing of Lazarus' illness, said this, This illness does not lead to death. It is for the glory of God, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. These words were not meant to deny the reality of Lazarus' death. No, rather, they were meant to reveal a greater truth, a truth that transcends the physical realm and touches the spiritual. A truth that speaks of power that is not bound by the limitations of this world, one that declares the sovereignty of God over life and death. In the story of Lazarus, we see the truth come to life. We see Jesus not as a mere man, but as the Son of God. We see him not as a healer, but as the resurrection and the life. We see him not as a victim of circumstance, but as the master of all. You see, when Jesus arrived in Bethany, Lazarus had been dead in the tomb for four days. That means the smell was ripe. The reality of his death was undeniable. The sorrow of his sisters were real. In the midst of this, there's Jesus. Jesus, in the face of death, spoke words of life. He says, Lazarus, come out! And Lazarus, who was dead, came back to life. He came out of the grave, still wrapped in his grave clothes, but alive. Alive, not by the power of man, but by the power of God. Alive, not by the laws of nature, but by the command of Jesus. This miracle was not just about bringing Lazarus back to life. It was about demonstrating the power of Jesus over death. It was about showing that death in its finality is not final in the hands of Jesus. It is easy to see the physical miracle, but Jesus' power is not limited to the physical as we've been showing you over and over throughout these sessions. There is a deeper meaning, a spiritual element, that we must consider. This power is also about spiritual death. It is about the death that comes from sin. It is about the death that separates us from God. It is about the death that holds us captive in its grip. But in Jesus, we see a power that breaks this grip. We see a power that brings life where there is death. We see a power that offers hope where there is despair. We see a power that gives freedom where there is bondage. Here, we see a glimpse of this power. We see a preview of what Jesus would later accomplish on the cross. We see a demonstration of his power over death, not in the physical sense, but as I said, in the spiritual sense. The narrative, so rich in symbolism and meaning, offers us a glimpse into the divine purpose of Jesus' delay in visiting Lazarus which initially seems like a lack of concern, but rather it is a demonstration of divine timing. In our own lives, we often find ourselves in situations where we're praying for something and it seems as if God is not responding. 
However, just as in the story of Lazarus, God's apparent silence doesn't mean that he is not working. His timing is always perfect, even when it doesn't align with our own expectations. Jesus is calling us out of death and into life. More importantly, he's calling us out of the grips of the enemy and into his loving arms. The story of Lazarus also brings light to the transformative power of Jesus' love. The love Jesus had for Lazarus and his sisters is evident throughout the narrative. It is love that led him to weep at Lazarus' tomb. It is this love that compelled him to bring Lazarus back to life. This love is not limited to Lazarus and his sisters, but it's extended to each and every one of us. Yes, you sitting there right now watching this session. His love extends to you. When we look at the story of Lazarus, we see Jesus who weeps with Mary and Martha. We see Jesus who shares in their grief. We see Jesus who loves deeply and unconditionally. This is a God who loves us so much that he became one of us. A God who loves us so much that he shares in our joys, in our sorrows, in our triumphs, in our tragedies. Jesus defies the laws of nature and wields the power of life over death. This is a God who speaks and it is done. A God who commands and it stands firm. A God who has the power to give life and take it away. This story reminds us of God's power over death and His purpose in our lives. It is a story that shows us that even, even in the midst of our darkest hours, God is always working for our good and His glory. It is a story that assures us of His love, His mercy, and His grace. In the face of life's trials and tribulations, we must hold on to hope. We must hold on to the hope that we have in Jesus. He is the only one who can turn our mourning into dancing, our sorrow into joy. He is the one who can bring life out of death, hope out of despair. He is the one who can take the broken pieces and make them whole again.